my name's Leo. Um, I'm the owner of uh, Scenic Coffee and Brunch at A two four one Woodbine Avenue in in Markham. Um, so we serve Japanese kind of inspired brunches with uh, locally roasted coffee. We started our cafe back in April of 2019, and uh, how we got started is um, our space is actually in a shared space with the, the salon called Initium. And I actually started out as a client there. And, and the owner there, Wilson, is a friend of my sister's. They went to school together. So as a client, I, I was talking to them about just like coffee culture in Markham in general and um, just how there are not a lot of great independent restaurants, especially brunch restaurants. And then he told me that the cafe they were running in their space they're going to close it down and asked if I was interested in taking it over. Uh, funny, funny thing was that um, when they asked me to come on board, they told me that they didn't know too much about like running a restaurant. So they thought that they were only allowed to, to run a vegetarian place because of the limited size of their kitchen and the limited facilities. So I actually went on, went on board thinking I was going to open a vegetarian brunch spot maybe with a little bit of like cured meats, but for the most part, I was going to be vegetarian. So if you actually look at our menu, a lot of it doesn't have meat in it. That's kind of how the scenic uh, brand kind of came about too, that we were thinking really about like greenery, nature. And then we had our first uh, health and safety inspection from from New York region. And, there, and I asked them, it's like, are, like, I heard this place is only allowed to do vegetarian food. And they're like, no, as long as you stay clean. You can make anything you want. So that's when we start adding a few like meat items on the menu. When COVID hit in uh, March 2020, we had just reached a full year of business and had a full year's yeah. numbers. So that's that kind of allowed us just to come in under to uh, to fit in for all this um, all the support. I remember back then it was it was kind of voluntary because they hadn't gone into official lockdown yet. And then just mm -hmm. as just as we were post deciding that, okay, we're gonna close down, the, the mandated lockdown took into effect right on the same day. Closed down for maybe about, we did nothing. Like straight up, we were silent for about a month or two. Uh, but I knew this was an opportunity to kind of, well, like you kind of have to stay relevant and stay and remind yeah. our customers that we're still around so my focus kind of shifted towards uh, building our social media a new business model where where we can reduce our cost and um and still offer something to to stay in the minds of of, uh, of our customers so we ended up um doing pastries where people where customers can pre-order but so mm -hmm. our main focus was kind of like hey let's Let's make it a fun environment. Let's 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 have a good team that's social and you know, try to communicate with the with the customers so they want to come back and just hang out with us. So that was us wanting to kind of turn the cafe into this community hub where people can come kind of come in and out and feel mm -hmm. comfortable to come even if they're not feeling like they want a coffee but they want to maybe just see us. And then on top of that, like um, something we really wanted to do was uh, we wanted to work with as many. Uh, Kind of local other local businesses as we could mm -hmm. so um so some of the local businesses we work with is um like pm pnf meats we we get all our uh pima bacon our ham all our cured meats from pnf meats that are up in um i want to say like elgin mills and woodbine around that area okay. yeah, so yeah. another another small markham uh, uh butcher shop and then we work with um, Hatch Coffee, and they're also they're also in Markham with their yep. roastery. But going uh, back to like the whole the whole COVID thing, we just throughout COVID, we lost maybe like ninety five percent of our business. And then another thing is we um, so to adapt when when they started to doing phase one reopening, doing uh, patios and indoor dining again. A big thing we had to do was actually start taking reservations. So we had to build out a whole reservation system. So moving forward, um, so we really want to get back into like the ultimate goal is to being fully reopened again, right? Like having yeah. 
being fully seated inside and kind of being able to run service normally. That's yeah. that's definitely the ultimate goal. Um, but we got closed down right as we hit our one year mark or like just before that, our official one year mark. And we were starting to see the numbers that we want. We were trying to, we were starting to hit the targets that we wanted to. And then we also want to keep being involved with some of the non, uh, more nonprofits um, in the area and have them feel comfortable reaching out to us. And, um, and that's kind of what we want to do building forward. Just keep building that relationship with the people. In terms of drinks, I really like our, we, I really like our coffee. Like it seems really simple, right? But we, yeah. we get, we work with a local roaster and then we work with them to make sure that we're able to pull the best, the best coffee. Like, um, like there's a lot of little, little nuances involved. Mm-hmm. So our coffee is great. And then our tea lattes, like the matcha and the hojicha latte, we get from a really great supplier from uh, that's based in Montreal, but her family owns a farm in, in Japan. Favorite food wise, it seems uh, simple enough, but um, it's actually the grilled cheese on the menu that we have. So we use three types of cheese and we have uh, bonito fish flakes and, and, and uh, nori toasted seaweed flakes, nori flakes on there. 